Hi, I'm Jerry Flegel, President and CEO of the Hoover Presidential Foundation. Welcome to the program. In this episode, we'll discuss some of the best ways to get the most out of your financial gifts to the Timeless Values Modern Experience Campaign. Joining me today is Jean Anderson. Jean is a member of our Foundation's Board of Trustees, our immediate past chairman, and an attorney who specializes in taxes and finance. Now, Jean, there are a number of ways to make charitable contributions to campaigns like this one. Some ways have better tax benefits than others. Let's explore the options out there. Okay, Jerry, uh, thanks you very much. I appreciate being here to have the opportunity to do this. Uh, if I can provide some information to people that may be helpful to them in terms of gifting to the Hoover Presidential Foundation, uh, that's why I'm here, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, we are, of course, as, as you mentioned, encouraging gifts for the renovation of the museum. That's really what we need to get down at this point in time. And uh, we look at different ways we can do that, and, and there are a lot of differences in the benefit to the donor, depending on how they do their gifting. Um, simplest way we'll start with is, is a cash gift. Uh, if someone wants to make a contribution to the campaign, they can transfer uh, by check or uh, cash uh, a gift to the organization. Real simple, real easy, and they get a tax deduction for doing that. They can write that off against their other income and, and save income tax by doing that. Uh, both federal taxes and, and Iowa. Uh, simple, that's, a, that's probably the biggest virtue of doing the, the cash kind of mm -hmm. uh, contribution. Um, it's a great way to do uh, what I call do, do good and do well at the same time. Do good for the organization and do well for yourself because they're saving taxes by doing that. Um, there is a limitation on it. Uh, you cannot deduct more than 60% of your adjusted gross income. So if your adjusted gross income is, is $100,000 in a given year, the most deduction you have for charitable contributions would be $60,000. And they've, uh, there was kind of an exception during the pandemic, but that, that they've gone back to that number now, correct? Exactly right, Jerry. Mm -hmm. 2021 uh, is unlimited, but we're now back to 60%. But uh, if you give more than the 60% of your adjusted gross income in a given year, uh, you can carry it forward to the next year, and you can carry it forward up to five years. So there's, there's no reason why you can't make a, a large contribution uh, and just carry it forward if you've exceeded your adjusted gross income. So that's, that's, uh, that's a cash gift. That's simple. And, and uh, sorry, that's the easy way to start, but let's move on to something. And, more and, we, and we get a lot of cash gifts, and we're always appreciative of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, the next one I'd like to talk about, if this is okay with you, is uh, donating from your IRA. Okay, no, that's great, and it's a great way to do it. And a lot of people don't realize the benefits that, and I'm sure you're going to touch on. It's, it's, yeah, it's a huge benefit to do that. If you're over 70 and a half, uh, which a lot of us are, uh, and you uh, make a contribution directly from your IRA, then uh, you don't report on, on taxes. You know, if you're more mature and, and are required to take the required minimum distributions uh, from your IRA, of course, that is income taxable to you. If you have the IRA make a distribution directly to the Hoover Foundation, then uh, it's non-taxable to you. So a great, great way to avoid tax. All the money coming out of a traditional IRA is going to be subject to income tax, whether it comes to you as the owner of that or whether it goes to your children after your death. It's going to be subject to income tax unless we give it directly to a charitable organization. So really what it would do uh, by making a charitable IRA gift, I think that's what we, we call yeah. it, is, is in essence, whatever your IRA is, you're taking it off your income, so you're reducing your income, what's going to get taxed, right? What about the charitable? Well, will they be able to claim a charitable deduction or not with that IRA? There's no charitable deduction. Because they've already got the charitable. The benefit of by not having included in your income. Okay. And that is limited to $100,000 per year, but again, just like the cash contribution, if you go over the 100000 it just carries over into the next year. Um, I didn't realize that about the carryover. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so that's a positive thing mm -hmm. there. So we're not limited to the $100,000. Okay. Um, the other thing that's important, I think, to be aware on that is if your retirement account is a 401 or, or another type of retirement account, um, that's not going to qualify for this. However, 
you can transfer some of your 401k into an IRA that you set up and then make the transfer. Oh, okay, so, okay. So there's, there's an easy way to handle that if you need to do that. Okay. Uh, we're not subject to the 60% limitation, and that's huge. Uh, if you want to make a $100,000 contribution and your adjusted gross income is not high enough to allow a full deduction, if it comes from your IRA, we don't worry about it. That doesn't come into play. Okay. Um, also, if you are using your IRA distributions as uh, part of your income you need to, to pay for your expenses, uh, you can take an additional distribution beyond what you give to the charity and uh, still have the income for your, your spending needs. Okay. Well, it's interesting, and I think it must be becoming more and more known, Gene, because we've actually seen an uptick here at the foundation in people, uh, uh, you know, giving from their IRAs. Great. That's, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that, Jerry. Mm -hmm. that's, that's such a fantastic way to, to, to mm -hmm. give. And, you know, a lot of people don't think about the fact that when death occurs and you transfer it to your uh, spouse or, or children or grandchildren, they're going to pay income tax on that as it comes out. And uh, with children and grandchildren now, it all has to come out within 10 years. It's a, it's a short period mm -hmm. to have it all come out, and it's going to be subject to income tax. And also, it is tax in your estate for estate tax and inheritance tax. So, if you're if you're at all motivated to consider doing some significant transfers to uh, Hoover or, or another uh -huh. uh, charity for that uh, purpose, uh, it's a great thing to do. A great way to take advantage of the tax laws to your benefit. Well, and I think that that's always good. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, Oh, actually, one other thing I want to cover on that. You can also take your standard deduction. So you can, you're not going to have a charitable okay. deduction, but you also get your standard the deduction. Standard so deduction. so we, we double up on it. Okay. Uh, so. Very good. Uh, that, that is uh, great information for, uh, for many people. Okay, I think that covers, unless you got questions on, uh, uh, I, on the I, IRA. I, I, I don't on the IRA. I think that's good. What, what about stocks, Gene, or appreciable assets? Oh, good. That's the next thing I want to talk oh, about. Oh, okay, great, so, great. That's good. Uh, that, that's another great way to uh, take advantage of the tax law for your benefit. Uh, I, this, all I've done for years is, is tax work, and people say to me sometimes, Gene, isn't it really boring? Why would why'd you want to be doing tax law? And I said, this is fun. This is fun <laughs> stuff. There's so many things we can do advantageous uh, and, and totally within the law. And, and you just re requested me to talk about one other that is there, and that is um, if you've got some uh, uh, stock investment you made that, uh, let's say you, you uh, paid 20000 for the stock, it's now worth 100000 If you sell that stock, you've got a capital gain you've got to pay tax on of $80,000. If you give that $100,000 stock to Hoover or another qualified charitable organization, you don't pay tax on, on it because you didn't sell it. And Hoover Foundation is a tax-exempt organization, so yes. they don't pay tax on it. So if you give $100,000 of stock, it goes with a deduction to you uh, as a charitable contribution and the charity doesn't pay tax on it so it's a, it's a double gain on that well and uh, and, the, and of course obviously you're, you're not paying capital gains and so forth like that so there's some real savings in that it's it's interesting I think sometimes that's one of the most overlooked when we talk to uh, potential donors uh, about things you know and I always crack the joke is is you know put your checkbook away I don't want it let's talk about you know appreciate appreciated stock because that's the most efficient way for, a lot of times for people to give it, it really is and a lot of people yeah you know, I think don't think about it and there can be uh, you know the simple example I just used of, of a stock that you paid 24 is now worth a hundred thousand um, you can do it with mutual funds mm -hmm. same yes. thing mutual funds certainly qualify and again you'll pay no capital gains tax on what you transfer to the charity the charities that pay capital gains tax so it's it's a it's a double win. Usually you're going to see more capital gains and in, in individual stocks that are held, though, than mutual funds, correct? Because mutual funds pretty much have to about wash it out every year. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, somewhat. But, yeah. but there's still, there's still gain there that, that yeah. you can save by using that as, as a contribution. And, and it doesn't have to be uh, stock investments. It can be other appreciated uh, 
assets. Well, so that may, give, maybe give us a couple examples on that, other appreciated well, assets. Classic example, of course, would be if you got 80 acres of farmland that has appreciated, which in today's society, almost all farmland is appreciated. A lot, a lot. lately, yes. Uh, you can donate that to the, the charity. Yeah. And, uh, and I would think the foundation would be happy to uh, receive that. We, we definitely would, and, and, and we're set up where we can take uh, uh, donations of, of land, on, you know, or, or real estate on that as well. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have to be that. It could be a, a building, it could be any type of appreciated right. asset really fits in that, that kind of planning. And uh, such a great way to do it. Again, a good example of, of me saying you can do good and do well at the same time. Uh, great, great, uh, great way to do that. Well, good. What, uh, one of the things that we've got, obviously, with the farm economy being as strong as it has been the last year or two, looks like it's going to be this year, maybe even a couple more years, depending on situation, is grain prices are really high uh, on there. And, uh, you know, is that something that people can uh, also donate? Yeah, there are a few limitations on that that I, I think would go beyond what we have time to do today. Mm -hmm. but, but definitely, uh, they uh, deliver some grain to the elevator and put it in the name of, of uh, Hoover Foundation. Uh, then uh, the producer, the farmer, is not going to pay tax on it. Okay. So it's it's uh, yeah, it's another way of doing. It. That's you know that's pretty similar to our appreciated stock. Exactly. Or appreciated farmland is, is the same thing because. Uh, for the most part, the, the corn or beans you have to sell has a zero cost basis because you've already deducted the expenses of mm -hmm. seed, fertilizer, and chemical. Uh, and so that's, it's a similar kind of thing. We have had a couple people already approach us this year about, you know, uh, gifts of grain. So I, I think there's some, some farmers are starting to think about some of those things. It's, it's, a, it's a great move for, uh, for mm -hmm. farm people to do that. And, uh, and of course, here in Iowa, we've got a lot of farm people. So. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> uh, so that's a good, uh, good thing for them to consider. So uh, a good approach, good, good question. That okay. Theory. Well, d one of the things that, you know, all nonprofits do, especially in, when they're doing campaigns, is, is they'll also take pledges, you know, where somebody will say, you know, I can, give, I can give some money, but I'll pledge to give it over a certain amount of time, so forth like that. Tell us a little bit about the tax ramifications on that. Okay, Jerry, I think that... Uh, that you'd be happy to have people pledge uh, dollars yeah, to the sure. organization. Uh, the, the difficulty of pledges is it's a commitment that the person is making to, to give in the future. There's no deduction for the pledge because you've not made a gift to the uh, mm -hmm. organization at that point in time. Uh, if you're an Iowa resident, and we're going to talk about the tax credit in mm -hmm. just a few minutes, uh, if you're an Iowa resident paying taxes in Iowa, uh, you don't get a tax deduction or credit for, for the pledge until it's paid. Until it's paid. And, mm -hmm. and Jerry, I think maybe a different program, at least we'll spend a little bit of time on the tax credit here in a few minutes, but that has a time period. That runs out. Mm -hmm. if, if you do a pledge to be paid eight years from now, uh, you miss the tax credit. Right. So uh, the pledge is a great idea. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, to me, the pledge, and we'll uh, maybe few minutes discuss some other longer range mm -hmm. uh, donations or gifting. Uh, the, the pledge is, is a little bit like having provision you will to give something somewhere down the road. And it's a great thing, long term continuation for uh, a foundation is fantastic. <clears throat> it doesn't do much for the present funding needs for the, the renovation. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, no, that that is true. So one other, there's one other way that uh, also people give that um, will not uh, allow the tax credit. You'll talk about the tax credit in just a minute, and that's donor advised funds, which have become very popular in the last few years. Yeah, uh, donor advised funds are are, uh, are great. I mean, the, the, uh, the, a lot of communities have those now, and and, and it's it's a it's a really uh, easy way to make contributions to. Uh, organizations often within your community that's mm -hmm. typically where, mm -hmm. where they, they go and that, that's a good thing to do but there's no tax credit yeah so if you're looking for the Iowa tax credit it won't work now if you're a, uh, a resident of another state that and you don't pay any Iowa uh, income tax take a look at that yeah no that you're exactly right and of course with donor advised funds in essence you're giving your if you're making uh, a contribution to your donor advice fund. It, it technically is a 501 
charitable yeah. contribution. Yeah. So you made the charitable contribution, and you don't get another charitable contribution or tax credit yeah. off of that. No, you, you've done it, and that's good. And, and also on, on those, uh, which I don't think is too much of an issue for most people, but uh, the organization that's handling the funding has final say on, on where yes. it goes. Uh, yes. You can advise, I mean, they call them donor advice, funds. you can advise where you want the, your contribution to go, mm -hmm. but they have the final say, and, and uh, I don't think I've heard very many issues of, of uh, the, the fund transferring someplace other than where the donor wanted to go, but well, happen. And a lot of that is uh, to protect to make sure that they don't uh, does try and designate something that's not eligible yeah, for that donor yeah, advice yeah, fund yeah. as well on that, Gene. So, well, let's talk a little bit about the Hoover tax credit on there. It's something unique, uh, uh, and it's a real advantage for donors right now. It's a huge advantage. I just, uh, you are so fortunate. I was going to say we because I feel like I'm part of the, of the organization too, but to have that tax credit, the, uh, if, uh, for people that aren't familiar with it, uh, the Iowa legislature, uh, uh, passed a bill and the governor signed it that gives a credit for contributions made to the Hoover Foundation. Now that credit is only for contributions to the Hoover Foundation, so you, you don't get a credit if you give it to uh, to the library, to the, to the church, or wherever else. This is purely for funds going to, to Hoover. And, and, and specifically even just to the museum renovation yeah. campaign. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is, is, is fantastic mm -hmm. for us to have that done. Well, Gene, let's take a look at a, 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 some illustrations of how the Hoover tax credit can positively impact people's contributions. Okay, Jerry, thank you. Uh, this, this chart gives us uh, an illustration of it, and I'm going to look at the, the right-hand column just so... Uh, my math is easy as we're talking. Good round numbers. Good round numbers to work with. Uh, the tax credit is a credit of 25% of the contribution you make to the foundation. So if a contribution is made of $100,000 in, in the year 2022, you have a credit against your Iowa income tax of $25,000. So if your income tax that you owe to the state of Iowa, it would be normally, say, $30,000 the credit would offset that is not a deduction. It's it's a credit against the tax, and that's important to be you know, be aware of. That you've either paid or owe, correct? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you the twenty five thousand would come against that thirty thousand example I'm just saying, and, mm -hmm. and would reduce that uh, as tax credit. So um, huge, huge, huge savings. Now there there is a. a a federal deduction for the contribution, obviously, mm -hmm. a federal tax, and that does get reduced by the amount of the of the, of the credit. So the federal deduction will go down to seventy five thousand instead of the four hundred thousand you'd otherwise have. Uh, and then our federal tax savings, based on the on the tax uh, rate, would would uh, get us to that figure there. So the net cost of the gift is forty seven thousand dollars. You give a hundred thousand dollars to the organization, and really you're Net cost to you as a donor is forty-seven thousand two fifty. Uh, that's that's a win-win. It it sure is. It sure is. I mean, that's a that's a great advantage for uh, the foundation for the museum renovation and for the donor. It, it is is huge for the donor. I mean, it, we we give funds to the organization because we want to support the organization, and and uh, if we want to support the organization, we probably want to support it. Uh, all we can within the limitations of, of what our financial mm -hmm. situation is. And, and this just allows basically a double double contribution. I mean, this costs you 47250 but it's 100000 going to the organization. Uh, that's almost like a, a matching gift. It's, it's a fantastic way to do it if you're paying tax to the state of Iowa. And that applies both to uh, individuals, uh, corporations, a limited liability company that has chosen to pay income tax. I mean, there's a uh, uh, financial institution. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's wide open to do that as long as you have a tax obligation to the state of Iowa. And uh, again, if, if it doesn't get totally used in the year of the contribution, it carries forward. How, how many years can, I, can you carry that Hoover tax credit forward, Gene? Uh, five years. Oh, okay. So 
That, boy, that's that's good. Yeah. So even if you can't use it right away, you're you're always going to be able to use it over yeah. five years. You should be able to. You're not. Yeah. You're not going to lose it. Uh -huh. It's there to uh -huh. be to, to be uh, picked well, up when you well, can. Well, one of the things that we found, I know, at the end of 2021, which the tax credit was eligible for then, it wasn't widely known, and that's why we're doing these. Is uh, uh, when we were visiting with donors, oftentimes we found after we explained to them is their contribution that well gosh if i'm given this i can do this and they saw how much the impact could maximize and and really they a lot of people doubled their donations which it makes a perfect if, sense if they were thinking of donating a hundred thousand <laughs> it's only going to cost them 47 so they can double it and, yep. uh, and have the same net impacts and uh, everybody wins yeah and, and you know that's fantastic the legislature to, to give us that benefit um, they, I think it's fair to say they wanted to um, support uh, the renovation of, of the museum, and they chose that as a way to do it, and it's uh, beneficial to, to the organization, obviously, and also to anyone that wants to make a contribution to the organization. So now those tax credits aren't going to be around forever, though, are they? No, no. <laughs> we got a little limitation on that. So, so you got to get with it and, and make the contribution, and uh, uh, even if you want to go more than that, uh, uh, then what you can write off uh, in terms of, of the federal gift deduction, uh, go ahead because you're right. going to carry it forward. Right. So, so we, I mean, the, the legislature basically gave us $5 million in tax credits, um, which have to be used uh, either as first come, first served, uh, 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 and if uh, they will expire, and uh, as far as we have to turn them back in if we haven't used them all by December 31st of 2023. Right. So, we're, so we're, uh, We've got uh, 22 and 23, but we've got to use those up. The, the days are going to go by. Jim. Yes. I mean, that's a good point to make for people so they don't sit back and, and, right. uh, and not deal with it because it's such a fantastic benefit uh, for anyone that wants to make a significant contribution. Uh, don't let it pass. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of it. Uh, you need to do that. Well, great, great. Well, maybe, maybe if uh, Gene just want to touch base on maybe, you know, we've talked about a lot of good ways to, to uh, that you can do diving, and and it's also advantageous tax wise. Maybe talk about some things that probably wouldn't be maybe the best vehicles, especially for the capital campaign that we're in. Okay, Jerry, uh, can I do one other thing before we go absolutely, there? Okay? absolutely, Gene. That, that uh, I just want to point out, it may be obvious from the discussion so far, but. Uh, you can give appreciated stock and get an extra benefit from that because your appreciation isn't going to be su uh, subject to capital gains tax. So we got, we got the tax credit, we got the federal deduction, and we avoided capital gains tax. Boy, yeah, um, that is terrific. I, I, there's probably an illustration that we have for that, isn't there? If you sell ca uh, stock, in this case we're showing $25,000 of original cost of stock, uh, it's fair market value now. It's fifty thousand. So you you sell it, take in the cash. You're going to pay federal capital gains tax of approximately forty seven hundred dollars. Uh, that's approximate rate. It could be higher than that uh, if you're a low income person. It could mm -hmm. be lower, but let's, mm -hmm. that's a fair figure to use. You got uh, state capital gains tax rate, uh, and that's uh, again approximately an eight point five three percent rate. You're going to pay. Uh, so from your fifty thousand dollars, you've only got forty three thousand left to give to the organization, mm -hmm. and the income tax then you've avoided is is the eleven thousand nine hundred we're showing here. Uh, Hoover tax credit, in this case, would be ten thousand seven ninety one. Mm -hmm. So Hoover receives forty three thousand instead of fifty thousand. And it actually only cost you nine thousand dollars because wow. of that, that triple benefit. That is amazing on there. So that and that's with cash. What about stocks? Uh, well, stocks is, is uh, if we don't have a. I mean, if you donate, if you if donate, we donate the stock. stock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're donating cash here in this example, mm -hmm. which is is uh, the wrong way to do it <laughs> from a tax point of view. But there is no wrong way to give it. It's, mm -hmm. From a tax point of view, it's, it's not. A, There's just better ways. <laughs> Our, our going back here again. Our stocks were fifty thousand. The original cost of it was twenty five thousand. If we give it to the Hoover or to the organization mm -hmm. at that point, we don't pay tax on. And of course, Hoover doesn't pay tax. So this is tax free yeah. organization. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no federal uh, capital gains tax. No state capital gains tax. So the full fifty thousand goes to the foundation. Mm -hmm. And then we've. Uh, Avoided uh, federal tax with a deduction uh, for federal taxes. 
we have a uh, tax credit. In this case, it would be a $12,500, be the 25 percent of, of mm -hmm. the 50000 So the actual net cost, you made money <laughs> by, from, from, from what you paid for the stock. You made money uh, by giving it to the foundation gave you tax credit. And that is not far-fetched. I mean, that is basically if stock had doubled, and we've uh, seen yeah. circumstances where it's, you know, grown 5, 10, 15 yeah. times. Yeah. It's, just, it's just an unbelievable tax benefit to take advantage of this thing. And as you correctly said, I think it's important to point out, there is a limitation. If we, we, uh, we, we have a $5 million uh, limitation of what we can get, that's $20 million of donations. Mm -hmm. If we go above that, uh, they're gone. It's gone. We mm -hmm. missed it. So, it, and if first come, first serve. So, uh, again, I think it's time for people to start thinking about what they would like to do to benefit the organization and and uh, and, and benefit the whole community in the state by, by benefiting the organization. So it's a great, great time to look at it. And like I said, this is not going to last forever. So let's take advantage of it and. Okay. Well, Th those are the reasons why, <laughs> contrary to what some people think, Gene, this is really boring. This, this is fun stuff. It, it is. I mean, it's a way that you can really figure out on how to maximize uh, uh, people's uh, charitable yeah. intentions yeah. on something yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. So, well, uh, and I, I mentioned previously, so there's some other vehicles that people do giving, but they may not be appropriate for this capital campaign because the campaign has to raise the money. And we got to, our plan is then we want to do the renovation and, and obviously open it if we can by late 2024. So um, what are maybe some less effective ways to give? They're usually they're good, maybe long range, but they won't fit into this model. Sure, yeah, there's some really great long range uh, tax planning of, of, of gifting that can be used, and and I'll cover just two or three of them I think that mm -hmm. uh, that are, are often used. But uh, th there are things that don't put dollars in the foundation's pocket now to deal with the, with the foundation, uh, I'm sorry, with the museum uh, mm -hmm. renovation. Uh, Charitable Remainder Trust. Uh, Charitable Remainder Trust is a classic way to do that. Uh, we also get some of the tax benefit we talked here. If you've got stock that you paid um, uh, 25000 for that's now worth 50000 if you sell that stock, of course, you've got a capital gains tax to pay. If you... Uh, give a stock to a charitable remainder trust that you set up, you get a tax deduction for that, the, found, the, the organization, the foundation in this case, would, would, would hold those funds, keep them invested either in the stock that initially was invested or sell the stock tax-free and then invest in some other way, and, and um, would then pay the donor an annual fee based on the amount of the contribution. Um, the donor saves the tax. I mean, you can, I'm trying to think of an example to make it real easy. I, can, I don't mess up my figures on this thing, Jerry. Uh, if, if you got a stock that's worth $100,000, let's do, mm -hmm. do me easy figures. $100,000, if you sell your stock, you're going to end up with about $60,000 of cash. If you then invest that cash at, say, 5% investment, you've got 30000 of income coming in every year. If you do the charitable remainder trust, and they pay you five percent, you got fifty thousand dollars coming in. Five percent of the four hundred, because we haven't mm -hmm. reduced it by the taxes. So the donor, if, if we've got some appreciated assets, it's a great way to benefit the organization and increase the donor's income if that's important to, to him or her. It just doesn't fit for what we really need for this purpose, because that's that's a huge benefit down the road and. And if someone is motivated to do that, uh, fantastic, because we also need... And we have, we have needs on down the road as well, so, yes. So it's great to do that. Uh -huh. uh, that's, a, that's a good thing to do. Uh -huh. We can do that with a, with a life estate. Uh, you give the farm to the organization, but retain a life estate. And uh, so the uh, owner of the land initially has income every year, it's similar to the charitable trust, uh -huh. or just actually a little simpler method of doing that. Uh -huh. um, and that's a, that's a possibility. Uh, to do something of that nature. Um, gift annuities, a charitable gift annuity is, is similar to the to the charitable trust we talked about, except in that case you don't actually have a trust set up. The organization signs an obligation, a contractual obligation to pay an annuity for the rest of your life or some period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but tax-wise works about the same way as we just talked mm -hmm. about. So that's, that's uh, again, good long-range planning. Uh, 
if that fits your situation. It just doesn't do what we need for funding right now. Right. And, and also no tax credit on it. Right, right, and that's what I was going to say. Is those are those are great giving vehicles, and uh, and we could do them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the foundation is set up to do yeah. annuities and charitable remainder trusts, but for the uh, museum renovation, they they're not a good fit. There'd be more as if you have other needs in longer range. That's right, and so keep those in mind that yep. it can be done. Uh, and if for some reason the uh, other arrangements that we've talked about for helping the uh, foundation right now with the renovation don't all fit your plans. Keep the other in mind because that's certainly yep. uh, a good way to, to uh, benefit uh, the, the contribution and take advantage of the tax law. Well, one of the things that we do here at, at the Hoover Presidential Foundation is, you know, and uh, actually Dave Dirks, one of our board trustees, uh, you know, and he's worked a long time in the development area for the University of Iowa, and he says, really, Jerry, he says it's pretty simple. Your job is to figure out how to make your donors dreams come true. So in other words, if a donor wants to do something, it's, you know, we've got a lot of different vehicles that we can do to, to help people do what they'd like to do on there and try and help them with the most tax advantageous way to do it. Jerry, that, that's, a, that's a nice way of saying it. That's a good way to say it because mm -hmm. that's really what you're doing. You're trying to help individuals, aren't you, doing that. Mm -hmm. um, no matter how you do it, a charitable contribution is going to reduce uh, your estate tax that's, mm -hmm. that we're all going to have to deal with at some mm -hmm. point. Uh, or, or the inheritance tax. Uh, so any kind of arrangement is, is good to do. Um, oh, another thing we can just real, real quick that also uh, might be more current helpful. If you've got some uh, closely held corporation stock, that's appreciated. You can give that to the Hoover, and then uh, Hoover can sell it back to the corporation. To the corporation. Mm -hmm. To get the cash, and, and uh, everyone benefits from that. And we've had a gift like that this winter, too. Have we? As well, yes. Super, mm -hmm. super. On there. So, so real briefly, kind of recapping then, Gene, so who can, who can give in this uh, in this project and earn the Hoover tax credit? Has to be someone that has income tax payable to the state of Iowa, mm -hmm. or, or an organization that has... Individuals. Yeah, individuals mm -hmm. or, or an organization that has mm -hmm. income tax payable to the state. Uh, you can live out of state, but if you have income that's taxable to the state of Iowa, then uh, then you qualify for the credit. And in fact, what we have is people that have donated to the renovation project that don't live out of state will fill out a tax credit application form and leave it up to them because they know their tax situation better than we do. But we offer that. Of course, if they don't, we we'll tell them we tell them, well, don't apply for it if you if you don't pay it because yeah. it's not going to make any sense anyway. But you're you're exactly right on that. Yeah, it's a good good situation. Mm -hmm. So so many ways. And again, go back to the comment I made at the very beginning. We can do good and do well at the same time. I just, I just, it's so important. I think, um, at least for my clients, if, if we can figure out a way that they benefit from it as well as organization, it makes it a lot easier for everyone to want to do it. Well, great. Well, Gene, so much appreciate you coming by and uh, telling us about some of these adv advantages and so forth like that. And uh, it's been really, really beneficial. Well, good, Jerry. So, so, appreciate it very much. Good, sir. So. So very good. Well, I'd like to again thank Gene Anderson, uh, who is uh, our tax attorney and a, and a member of the Presidential Foundation Board of Trustees, for his insight, into the, as you saw, into the many types of giving that can and will make the Timeless Value Monitor Experience campaign for the renovation of the Herbert Hoover Presidential Library and Museum a huge success. I would encourage you to speak with your own tax advisor uh, to seek ways in which your tax situation might benefit from a special gift to this campaign. You can always contact us here at the Foundation as well for further information about this campaign or visit TimelessValuesCampaign.org on the web. Again, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and uh, have a wonderful day. Wow, well, that was some great information. Um, and I can't thank Gene Anderson enough for uh, uh, coming in and, and uh, doing that. Uh, you can see why he's one of the preeminent tax attorneys in Southeast Iowa. Uh, Gene knows his stuff, has uh, uh, lived life to the fullest, and, and has been uh, very uh, uh, giving, I, I know, to the Hoover Presidential Foundation as well. So again, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, everybody's tax situation is different, so be sure to connect with your tax advisor about your specific needs. So please register for our final episode called The Surprise Benefits of the Hoover Tax Credit, 
uh, which airs on Tuesday night, May 17th at 6 p.m. And you might say, well, what else do you have on that? Well, we've got a couple different things that we'd like to show you on that as well. And Monday McCarty will be joining me for that. Recordings of these programs can be found at timelessvaluescampaign.org in the home drop-down menu of the In the News link. That's all we have time for tonight. We ran a little over. Appreciate you staying with us uh, on there. Be sure and visit timelessvaluescampaign.org to learn even more about this project. And thank you again for participating in this effort.